Welcome to the Short Score, the Team Roping Journal's weekly updates from the team roping world, including from Pro Rodeo, Major Jackpots, USTRC, and World Series of Team Roping Qualifiers, and more, with hosts Chelsea Schaefer and Caitlin Gustav. Hey, Caitlin. Hey, Chelsea. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Short Score. This is your Tuesday Team Roping Update. This week, we've got a cool episode because Tate Kirkenschlager stops by, and you can hear that at the end of the episode, our interview with Tate after him winning San Antonio with the former Resist All Rookie of the Year, Mm -hmm. Ross Ashford. So that's exciting, something to look forward to. We've never talked to Tate before for this, and so I'm... I always love talking to people that we don't interview often. But before we get to that, let's talk about what's going on in the world of Pro Rodeo this week. We've got JoJo Lamont and Trey Yates, who just won Tucson. That jumped them back up into the top 20 in the world after kind of a slow winner. Trey's the average champ, reigning average champ at the finals. And JoJo was kind of out of retirement, or is out of retirement with Trey this year. And you can look for a story on the website here in a little bit. JoJo told us that Trey's dad, JD, let him ride the great buckskin YY, as JoJo calls him YY the buckskin. Yes. He's renamed him. Um, and I know Trevor Brazil told me that you can tell how much JD loves Trey by allowing JoJo to ride his great buckskin horse. So well, as you guys see them this summer at the rodeos and at the jackpots, look for the buckskin. If he's got a YY brand on his hip, that's JD's cool, super cool horse. So keep an eye out for that. Also in Arizona... Riley and Brady Miner won the survey. They did. Caitlin watched that on the Matthews Landing Cattle live feed. I did while I was working. Yeah, uh huh. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. But we work for Team Roping. I'm allowed to watch these live feeds. It's one of the perks, actually, of working for the Team Roping Journal. People keep asking, we're like the live feed experts. Where can we watch the Americans? <laughs> Where can we watch everything? So, anyway, yes, the, the survey. Thanks to Kenna, for, Kenna Francis and Matthews Landing Cattle for keeping us updated on that. In other news, Clay Tryon and Jay Corkill won the Lone Star shootout that Austin Robertson puts on there in Stephenville. That paid forty thousand a man. So the end they Bloomer got trailers. Bloomer trailers. That was a cool deal. Mm-hmm. That was a cool rope in. So thanks to Austin for putting it on and Thanks for keeping us updated throughout the day yesterday as it kind of happened. Um, in World Series and USTRC news, you guys are going to want to buy your key cards. Um, if you're planning to enter the U.S. Finals, if you're planning to enter the World Series finale, if you're planning to just enter throughout the year, it saves you a lot of money in the long run, and there's a lot of perks that go with it. So make sure you check that out. And don't forget to get your tickets for the Timed Event Championship. Yes, the Cinch Timed Event Championship. Mm-hmm. Go to lazyetec.com. And you can find all the ticket information March 8th through the 10th. So the American Cowboy 10 is this weekend. Caitlin is going to be there. Mm-hmm. $709,000 payout. <laughs> That's for, a lot. For a 10 point that we had about six months to prepare. The but people at the World Series office just worked their tails off to make that happen. They've been hustling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have. They're, I don't think there's ever a time that they're not hustling. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah so you're going to get to go. We w- So for next week's episode of The Score, you can look forward to that being the American Cowboy 10 winners that Caitlin's going to talk to from AT&T Stadium. Guys, if you're listening to this podcast, guys and girls, and you're roping at the American Cowboy 10, freshen up on your interview skills <laughs> because Caitlin is going to be there and she is going to ask you all the cool questions about – what that event means to you, and what the win d- did for your life because they're mm-hmm. going to pay out life-changing money in AT&T Stadium. So. It's going to be exciting. Mm-hmm. Also, shout-out to the 500-plus breakaway ropers, almost 600 breakaway ropers that are roping for the American. At the, semi- at the semifinals. semifinals. Yeah, that's exciting in Fort Worth. I, I love seeing that many girls roping. In one place, they all entered, they put up their money, so that's exciting to see what the future of breakaway roping. Um, yeah, I picked a bad time to... Put down the calf ropes. Yeah, yeah, you did. Maybe you should consider yeah. cracking back out. <laughs> yeah, I, I the while we're recording this episode, actually, that is going on. The, the semifinals mm-hmm. are going on, so I'm sure there's going to be like one seven, one eight. It's going to be just dirty, tough. There's not going to be any safetying up from Fort Worth. I'm excited to see who makes it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Oh, we've got a little sponsorship announcement too. Massey Ferguson is joined up with the World Series of Team Roping to become the official sponsor of the World Series of Team Roping. So when you're doing your shopping and and you're looking for a new tractor for your place, consider that Macy Ferguson is now the official tractor of the World Series of Team Roping. 
And before we go into Tate's interview, I just wanted to say thank you all for listening. Remember to leave us a review on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, however you're listening, and enjoy our conversation with Tate. Hello. Hey, Tate. It's Chelsea Schaefer with the Team Rumpin' Journal. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. What are you up to? Oh, I'm just over here at Tyler Wade's getting ready to practice here in a little while. Oh, good. He's going to make fun of you because I was going to ask you if you would do my podcast, and he hates nothing more than podcasts. Well, thank you for agreeing to talk to us this morning. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, talk to me about that last year you guys ran. Um, Tyler ran him in the semifinals earlier in the week, mm-hmm. and uh, he was he was, pretty, he was good speed-wise. He just had some smaller horns and was a tick low-headed, but... I, I thought he was dang sure one of the better steers in the finals for sure. Just, mm-hmm. He was dang sure one of the better steers for sure, so I, I was uh, pretty happy to draw him, really. Very cool. And what horse were you on? 12-year-old horse called Smoke. I don't actually own the horse. Mm-hmm. A good friend of mine, uh, Brad Lands, owns the horse. Mm-hmm. And he bought the horse like three years ago, and he told me if I would train him, he'd let me use him. and. I roped on him for a couple of years and got him where I could haul him. I hauled him all last summer and then started hauling him this winter. And you, so the horse that Lane has of yours, do you not ride that one anymore? No, I haven't. Lane and I, after the finals or whatever, or really, um, yeah, after the finals, I told him if he wanted to buy the horse, just um, what he owed me for mount money, I'd just let him buy the horse because I had the horse retired. Yeah. Um, I had him retired like in the middle of the summer and then Lane called, I don't know, it would have been in November and asked about him and I just said, yeah, you can take him. I just, I had him retired. I wasn't ever planning on riding him again so I told him instead of giving me that mount money and not having a horse, just give me the mount money and keep the horse. That's awesome. That was pretty nice of you. <laughs> yeah, but we did. I mean, part of the deal is I do get to ride him whenever I want though. But, oh, gotcha. Uh, I mean, the horse is old and he's not... Not real sound. Like, a person can only ride him in the winter. Sure. Can't really haul him in the summer if his feet fall apart on the road. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I was wondering why you weren't riding that horse. I didn't realize Lane had ended up with him. That's exciting. Yeah, I was. And I, I almost rode that horse at San Antonio and San Angelo, but at Sor- I never rode that Sorrow in the Buildings till this year, but he did so good at Fort Worth and Denver and Odessa and stuff, I didn't want to get off of him. Gotcha. Now, are you ripping with Ross all year, or was that just a San Antonio part? partnership no um that was just the san antone part we uh really we've never rode together before san antone both of our partners didn't get in i called him a couple weeks before the rodeo and asked him to rope he didn't even know he's going to get into the rodeo yeah that's awesome he's a rookie uh, yeah. or he, last year was his rookie year right yeah he won the rookie. yeah, yeah he, won the, he won the rookie, rookie of the year, year yeah year. yeah that's awesome. So, um, t- talk to me about. Did you have any mess ups throughout the week? Like, t- did you get in easy? Did how was it? Um, really, we drew good all week. Mm-hmm. I mean, we drew one steer that come left. Everything else was just medium, right in the middle to slow. We, I mean, we drew excellent all week. Mm-hmm. There was uh, there was one start. The second steer in the semifinals, I missed. He was good. We could have we could have had a chance to win another. 3,000, 2,500, pretty easy. I should have, I should have caught that steer. He was, he was good. And, um, other than that, the third one in our first set, I did a bad job. I got him around the neck, didn't handle him very good. We could have had a little bit, done a little bit better there, but really we drew good. That's, that's probably the main, main reason we did good. I think I thought personally, I thought we outdrew everybody. You drew good. You're underselling yourself for sure. That's. I think you were probably you probably roped pretty good. I would guess too. <laughs> no, we, uh, I mean, it seemed like every steer we drew, they they won something on. I mean, the steer we went four one on in the semifinals had been run four times and not won anything less than second or third on him. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, and then that steer we run in the finals, they won a bunch on him. Sherwood and Worley placed on him once too, and he's a dang sure good steer. What callback were you going into the finals? Uh, we were first out. You were first out. So, <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I didn't watch the short round, so I was not aware no. that you were first out. What did, um, yeah. so were you just going for it? No reservations? What What was your game plan? Oh, uh, I wouldn't really say go. I mean, really, we were just going to just try to make the same run we've been re- making or whatever. Like I told Ross, I said, I mean, I'm not really the guy that can bring it straight over the chutes four coils away like Tyler Wilbate or Triggers or guys like that. So 
and I'm probably just going to ride across there and get him on a short rope and let him throw fast like we had been all week. And mm-hmm. if we're short four, we're short four. And if we're long five, we're long five. I said, I'm just, I'm not going to run over ourselves and try to do something we can't do. Mm-hmm. And it just, the steer was good. And Ross throws so dang fast. I mean, I don't have to throw very far. Like that steer we were four one on, I was only about a half a coil back and he healed him fast enough. So I was just going to try to do the same thing I did all week, just get a good start and go about a half a coil back. Now, I'm, I'm, I've am I'm never been to San Antonio. Can you sit at the back end and watch it? Did you get to watch everybody not be yeah, you can. Um, yeah, you can sit back there, and you can you can see pretty good back there. Did you watch it all? Yeah, we watched it all. Like, when we rode out, I thought when we were 4-7, Ross, he said, what do you think? And I said, I, said, I bet we went third. I said, I'd be good with third. I said, there's, there's too many good teams, and um, – there's too many good steers in there. I said, we'll probably, probably went third. And then, you know, the first five or six teams went and it just, you know, we were taking our boots off. It kind of went by fast and then looked up and there's like three teams left and we were still winning it. Then it felt like it took three hours to run the next three teams. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, they just, they could not, um, they could not get through. What did you guys say to each other? Did you, was there any? I mean, not really. I mean, when the miners went six right there, we knew we won it. Just, I think we both just smiled at each other, and that was it. I mean, and then we went over there to get our picture or whatever. And yeah. Just, How was the victory was, lap in the truck? Was that? It was good. <laughs> it was uh, the first half of it was it was good, and then the second half, when the truck comes around by the chutes or whatever, it's going so slow, and then it's just like, I don't know. I don't like a. I'm not real good in front. Of people uh-huh. kind of get embarrassed and then when, and then it kind of set in that everybody's staring at you on the back of the truck and it's like <laughs> you're kind of wanting the truck to hurry up and get out of the arena you feel awesome. <laughs> oh good it didn't buck you down or anything though did it no no it was fun though it was it was dang sure the best victory lap i've ever been a part of that's awesome so what's the plan for the rest of the year what are you doing um i'm entered at austin with bj duggar mm-hmm. and then i'm gonna go to california with russell cardoza mm-hmm and then I, I don't know after that. I don't. I'm gonna rodeo. I just don't know who I'm gonna rodeo with after that. I'm gonna go to Guyman with um, BJ Duggar, but he can't rodeo this summer. He's got a full time job, and uh, I don't know. I'll start at Reno, but I don't know who I'm gonna start with. Yeah. You don't think you can get Dakota to crack out? <laughs> wish I could. Uh, <laughs> I dang sure, dang sure wish I could. I told him, him and uh, Spencer entered over there at that. Uh, American or whatever. I told him he just needs to win about forty thousand over there, so he has to go. Yeah, I mean, gosh, if the, you have such a good argument to get Dakota to crack back out, like you just won San Antonio, he practically yeah. owes it to you. I know. I should. I should. I know. I told him the other day. Worst case scenario, you. Worst case scenario, you're going to have your name down with me, whether you like it or not. <laughs> At least the <laughs> Cheyenne. Surely you can talk him to go into like the cool big. Oh, ones. I could. No, I could talk him into. If worst came worse i can't get a partner i could talk him into going from reno to cheyenne three yeah, and a half weeks definitely i bet yeah i could i could talk him into that and that i know i can't talk him into going the northwest but i could dang sure <laughs> i mean it's so hot in texas he'll be wanting to get out of here those fancy summer. show horses anybody can lope them for him while he's gone you yeah, know no kidding that's <laughs> what i'll tell him too thanks everybody for listening we appreciate you talk to you soon